Hi all, this is Professor Disha Shukla and I am conducting the subject wireless communication. My today's topic is indoor propagation. Now we have already seen the concept of outdoor propagation that is whenever how does the wave travel in the outdoor area, how does attenuation occur in them due, maybe due to the buildings or trees or due to the atmosphere etc. Now here in this topic we will be discussing about the traversal of the waves in the inside of the house that is the indoor propagation and what kind of uh, what kind of attenuation or what kind of diffraction scattering etc that can occur in the inside of the house now outdoor models are not accurate for the in, uh, indoor scenarios obviously because the models that we have defined for the outdoor have different criteria different parameters whereas for the indoor propagation we consider different things so they are not accurate for the indoor scenarios like home shopping malls office buildings etc so the indoor radio channel differ from the traditional mobile radio channel in two different aspects that is the distance covered are much smaller and the variability of the environment is greater for a much smaller range of the transmitter and the receiver separation distance what does this mean the first thing is that as compared to the outdoor propagation the distance that a particular wave covers inside the indoor propagation is much smaller and the variability of the environment is greater that is the there is a large amount of variation in the environment inside the small range because the range i mean the separation between the transmitter and the receiver will be very small but the very uh, environment will be varying a lot certain propagation influencement that is w uh, the the reasons the propagation inside a building that are influenced by certain parameters so which are them the first one is the layout of the building how a particular building uh, has been constructed has been laid laid out the plan of that particular building is a parameter is a is an effective uh, affecting parameter for the propagation inside a building the another is the construction material that is whatever construction material that we are using how is it affecting the particular waves is again a parameter the building type that is what kind of a what building what is the type of the building that we are constructing that is it can be a traditional office building with a fixed walls that is the hard partition or it can be an open plan building with a movable wall panels that is the soft partition the partitions that we can move so either type of the building which kind of a building we are talking about that also defines the propagation influence the sports arena that is whether we are creating a home or an office or a sports complex is it a, a residential home or if it is a factory so what kind of a building it is also influencing the propagation in the inside of the I, I mean in the in indoor propagation now certain similarities and the dissimilarities between the indoor and the outdoor propagation can be measured like similarity in the mechanism is that in both of them that is in the indoor propagation and in the outdoor propagation the three mechanisms that will be occurring will be reflection scattering and diffraction but the differences will be in the condition that is the doors or the windows are open or not the mounting that is mounting place of the antenna that is where is that particular antenna mounted on the desk or on the ceiling and the level of the floors like if we are because we are talking about the indoor propagation at what level are we talk uh, at what level of the floor are we talking about propagation is also something that matters the indoor channels indoor channels can be basically ca classified as line of sight and obstructed that is the obs with varying degree of clutters these are the two indoor channels that are possible like that is uh, the transmission that occurs in s in the indoor propagation can either be because of the line of sight or it can be obstructed and it can be obstructed with different degree of clutters like there can be different objects due to which the obstruction is occurring the indoor propagation events and parameters can be listed as like what are the indoor propagation events and what are the parameters that affect them 
द फर्स्ट वन इज टेम्पोरल फीडिंग फॉर फिक्सड एंड मूविंग टर्मिनल्स दैट इज हाउ टेम्पोरल फीडिंग दैट हाउ टेम्पररी फीडिंग कैन अकर फॉर अ फिक्सड और अ मूविंग टर्मिनल वेदर अ पर्टिकुलर ट्रांसमीटर और अ रिसीवर इज फिक्सड और मूविंग द टेम्पररी फीडिंग इज अकर विल बी अकरिंग द मोशन ऑफ द पीपल इन साइड द बिल्डिंग कॉस इज द रिसेंट फीडिंग फॉर द स्टेशनरी रिसीवर दैट इज बिकॉज वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द इंडोर प्रोपोगेशन देर विल बी पीपल विल बी लिविंग देर एंड दे विल बी ऑल्सो इन मोशन सो द मोशन ऑफ दोज पीपल ऑल्सो कॉस इज द रेशियन फेडिंग फॉर द स्टेशनरी रिसीवर्स द रिसीवर्स विल बी कॉन्स्टेंट एट अ पर्टिकुलर लोकेशन बट द पीपल विल बी मूविंग फ्रॉम हियर एंड देर दे विल बी कॉसिंग रिशियन फेडिंग एंड द पोर्टेबल रिसीवर्स एक्सपीरियंसिस इन जनरल दैट इज द पोर्टेबल रिसीवर्स If the receiver is portable, then it will be experiencing relay fading for the OBS, that is the obstructed propagation path, and radiation fading for the line of sight path. So, whether a particular receiver is stationary or is it moving, both of them will be facing some or the other kind of fading. That is, the uh, receivers who are stationary will be will be experiencing a radiation fading, and the ones that are moving so for them the obs propagation path will be experiencing a relay fading and the los path will be experiencing a radiation fading moving on the multi path delay spread that is the buildings with a fewer metals and hard partitions typically have small rms delay spread that is 30 to 60 bits per second and it can support data rate excess of several mbps without equalization the larger building with a greater amount of metal may have rms delay spreads as large as 300 ns and it cannot support the data rate more than a few hundred kbps without equalization the path loss factors that are affecting for the indoor propagation includes the partition losses the partition losses between the floors and the signal penetration into the building these are the three possibilities or these are the three factors that that will affect the path loss that is that will uh, that will be the factors that will be doing the path loss see the partition between the floors means the losses between the floor of a building are determined using the external dimensions and the material of the building the type of the construction to create the floor the external surroundings and the number of windows all these parameters will be responsible for the uh, losses the path loss between the floor that is the partition losses between the floor the signal penetration into the building that is the path loss due to the signal penetration into the building the rf signals can penetrate from outside transmitter to the inside of the building and however the signals are attenuated so the path loss during the penetration can be found to be a function of a frequency of the signal that is the frequency of the signal will be responsible and the height of the building both of these are the parameters that will be affecting the signal penetration into the building now there are two different models that are used for the indoor propagation the first one is the itu indoor path loss model and to predict the propagation path loss inside the building we have l that is the total path loss is equal to 20 log f base 10 plus n log b base 10 plus p of f into n minus 28 now here f is the frequency of the transmission d is the distance n is the distance power loss coefficient that is a coefficient that will be affected because of the distance the more distance the more will be the uh, the path loss or the more attenuation small n is the number of floors between the transmitter and the receiver and p of n is the floor loss penetration factor now this is how the loss is calculated that is the path loss is calculated inside the ITU indoor path loss model again here l is the total path loss the f is the frequency of the transmission the d is the distance be- between the two that is the transmitter and the receiver this n capital n is the distance power loss coefficient small n is the pow- number of floors between the transmitter and the receiver and p of n is the floor loss penetration factor 
and the mod the another model is the log distance path loss model now the log distance path loss model it assumes that the path loss varies exponentially with the distance as the distance increases the path loss will be exponentially increasing the fall this is the formula that describes the indoor path loss now here again pl0 is the path loss in the decibels at the reference distance d0 that is calculated using the fries model now d is the distance of the path d0 is the reference distance that is usually 1 km for a large cell and 1 meter to 10 meter for a micro cell gamma is the path loss exponent and x of g is the normal or the gaussian random variable with a zero mean reflecting the attenuation that will be caused by the flat fading now this is how the whole loss is calculated for the log distance path loss model and this is all about the indoor propagation like this uh, the topic discusses about what are the factors that will be causing the indoor propagation what are the types that is what are the channels through which the indoor uh, indoor waves will be trans will be traversing what are the path two path loss models for it which are the factors that are affecting the path loss for the in the in indoor propagation etc now if you have any questions you can ask